long, O Lord, before you avenge our blood, and now it's happening. And instead of asking how long, they're saying hallelujah. In verse 21, what are the means by which God destroys her? A mighty angel, we've seen that before. There's several of them. A stone. And by the way, Daniel chapter 2 says a stone that was cut out of the mountain without human hands hit the image that Nebuchadnezzar was dreaming about. And the, it all came down in dust. This stone will be cast into the sea. And you remember that we said that the sea is the multitudes on which this harlot sits. And great destruction takes place because of the stone that's cast into the sea. And Babylon shall never be found again. In verse 22, silence. No musicians, no manufacturers, no millstones, no marriages. The city is now silent. And in verse 23, it goes dark. There is no power. Last week, Wade Cummins was with us and he shared with me that as he read the 18th chapter of Revelation, he thought, what in the world could happen that caused darkness all over a great city like this? And he reminded me that there is something called a nuclear electromagnetic pulse bomb. It doesn't blow anything down. It destroys the grid. It destroys all electronic devices. Besides all the kids in high school and junior high not having a cell phone, you can laugh at that, okay? Maggie's laughing at it, okay? All right, besides that, all of our information and means of transmitting information back and forth are all destroyed. It can happen in a heartbeat, can it? And it's because, verse 24, the blood of the saints and the martyrs and the prophets were found in their city, in Babylon. This is evidence which demands a verdict. And it's happening here. I'm going to give you some good news before we leave, okay? By the time we start now in chapter 19, the Lord willing, next Sunday and the... We're going to, we're going to see some good news. We're going to see some good news. Listen to this. By contrast, contrasting New Jerusalem with Babylon, let me give you the good news. The New Jerusalem needs no lamps. Because the glory of God illuminates it. Everybody say hallelujah. She will be the bride of Christ. And we shall be married to Jesus Christ forever and ever, seated at that wonderful banquet table, the Lamb's marriage feast. She, New Jerusalem, will be filled with music and harpist. She will have gold streets and gates of pearl and precious stones as walls. She will have living water to quench our thirst forever. She will have food that comes from the tree of life, a different fruit every month of the year. She will have leaves off of that tree that will be for the healing of the nations she will have on a throne the Creator. We will not worship creation. We'll worship the Creator. And instead of weeping and woes, we will be worshiping. We will have the real Christ, not the Antichrist. Folks, stay with me until we finish this marvelous book because it certainly... It ends on a good note. Are you with Him? If He were to call you home today, do you know your home is there in that new Jerusalem called heaven? I want you to bow your hearts and your heads with me. We're going to sing a fun little chorus, I think. Um, it's a nice little song. But before we do so, everyone here and everyone listening to my voice by other means. Certainly after listening to the, de the destruction and demise of Babylon, knowing that we've got New Jerusalem, heaven to go to, how could you choose not to be in heaven with Jesus forever and ever? 
So please make sure that you've invited him into your heart. You've asked for his forgiveness. And now you're walking in obedience to him. If there's other decisions among folks here in the congregation that the Lord is moving you to make, then we invite you to make those today. To follow the Lord in believer's baptism or to join our congregation. So the invitation is extended to us all. Lord, help us as we seek to be obedient to the Lord Jesus. He doesn't necessarily want your church attendance, your good behavior. He wants all of you. And that's surrender to Him. And now, Lord, as we close our service, that without you, we really could do nothing. And we sing this as a dedication prayer. As we close our service, bless our hearts in obedience in Jesus' name.